Hey, this is Pete from the 21st Century Prepper. This week's podcast, we'll be discussing the way I calculate how much food storage I need for a certain amount of time. Lots of ways you could do it. This is just the way I do it. And we'll be discussing some clothing options. Uh, with me tonight is Skip. Evening, everybody. So uh, the way I look at food storage, the, at least the amount that we need, I look at a two-week period and kind of keep track. So let's say in a two-week period we use four cans of corn. This is what I typically use as an example. So if I want to figure out what I need for six months, then I take that two weeks and how many how many two-week periods are in six months? That would be 12. Four cans times 12 is 48. So then that would be enough for the average of what we've eaten that two weeks. But for the four of us. So, but maybe there's five of us. Maybe there'll be six of us here or whatever. So, I, and I always increase that. I multiply it another uh, one and a half times. One and a half times 48 is 62. So, we need 62 cans of corn for a six month period. Same thing for, let's say, peas. Let's say we only had three cans in a two week period. Then we multiply that by 12, so 36, and then add another 18 onto that would be 54. So that's what I do for that. Now, let's say pasta, uh, spaghetti noodles. You have to look at the serving size per container then, and usually there are eight servings per package. So with four of us, and we always eat a little bit more, we generally eat about three quarters of a pound at a time because there's four of us. And there's teenagers and myself, and I like to eat. So we had, let's say, three boxes of pasta in a week. You just multiply that by whatever you're figuring. So you could do six months. You could do two months. You could do four months. You could do six months. You could do a year. If you, you want to get nuts and go two years, then you just have to mul- multiply it by whatever amount of months or two-week periods in that amount of time. And then my safety measure is one and a half extra of that, just in case. Now, if you have, uh, let's say, eight more people come in your house or five more people, then you have to factor that in. You have to multiply whatever you you seem as a good amount for you to have extra on hand. So that's it. I mean, it's pretty simple, pretty basic. And anyway, do you go nuts, uh, Skip, or how do you? We generally, like you, look at what we eat over a period of time uh, and try to stock up according to that. Like, my kids like SpaghettiOs and ravioli with meat sauce or whatever it is. And I kind of mm-hmm. figure on each one of those cans being one meal per person per day. And, you know, you figure if there's four of us, we need four cans of that plus something else, be it a can of corn, a can of peas, or something we can add in there. So I generally look at, with the canned meals, six cans per day, uh, as a bare minimum, we need to survive. Mm-hmm. As far as uh, other stuff goes, like um, I don't know, spices and that kind of, you, that is totally just guesswork on my part. You know, there's more spices. There's some spices that I use more than others, like obviously salt and pepper, garlic salt or garlic pe- uh, powder, onion powder. I use a lot more than, I can't even think of any other spices that I would. Cumin. Salt, salt and sugar. I use cumin. I use cumin, but you know it's it's not as much as garlic salt or garlic, garlic powder. So uh, that stuff is, I just buy the big institutional size, not the big like gallon jugs of, of garlic powder or that stuff, but at the the smaller. I'm not even sure what size they are. Thirty two ounce maybe, uh, eighteen ounce. I'm not even sure what size they are, but they sell them at Sam's Club. Uh, you can get some stuff at the grocery store in them. Not a whole lot of stuff. Uh, but uh, that's for that. That's what I go with. I just have a lot on hand of what I like the most, and then I have smaller spice jars of other things. I found that uh, the smaller containers that they sell at the Dollar Tree most times are a pretty good bargain for like onion powder, garlic powder, things like that. Yeah, those, those I snag the the odd odder ones that I don't use as much. Right at the Dollar Tree, we have. In our grocery stores here, we have uh, little packets that they sell of spices. So then we have some containers that we just, we, I mean, the packets sell for like 79 cents or something like that. So I 
we snag those and then we fill up the little containers. And it's it's a good amount of spices in there, so it's not right. not like we're not getting much. But yeah, so right. it those is are what two it is. things I mean, that I would add to that. Not it, like I said, is salt and sugar. Those are two things that we keep a lot on. My wife bakes. We have a lot of sugar on hand and a lot of salt. So yeah, I get the I get the one pound salt. Uh, what would those be? Can, can't just canisters or whatever? Yeah, <laughs> what do they consider yeah, those things? Not they're not jars. They're not whatever the salt comes in. What are those? I wonder what those are called. Uh, really <laughs> Has anybody know. ever thought of what those things are called? That salt comes in because it's like cardboard and kind of like has Quaker a little oats, metal right. spout on it. Yeah. So I have no idea. I want to life's great mysteries. There you go. What is the little container that salt is called? Come that comes in. What's it called? As far as other items, I stock cereal. It, it, granted, we may not have milk. Something really bad happened. We may not have milk, but uh, you can eat dry cereal. I technically I don't eat much cereal. My family loves it, but uh, its cereal is good for a year. If stored properly, you can probably get it maybe double that. I store juices and sauces, and you have to kind of guess how much soy sauce you're going to need. If you have 400 pounds of rice in buckets, uh, you probably want to have something to add flavor to it other than just plain rice. So that yeah. kind of stuff is, is tough to guess on how much you're going to need because uh, you use only a little bit at a time, but if you're going to be using it a lot, then the little bit adds up quite uh, quite quickly. So what else is there? It's pretty basic. I mean, it's not, it's not like it's rocket science. No, not really. Right? Just watch your calories okay. and make sure you have yeah. more than you need. The, should we, like, flip into, like, supplies, like toothpaste and that kind of crap, too? I mean, it's the same kind of thing. How much, how many tubes of toothpaste do you use in a six-month period? Keep track of it, and then if you want to have toothpaste for a year, buy that many. Yeah, same right? shampoo and toilet paper and all that stuff. Yeah. You could do a two-week time study on what you use and probably come up with a pretty good number of what you need. Yeah, yeah as long as you're average while you're there. All right, well, that kind of covers, I mean, the food storage idea and also regular supplies. It's just you, you, you don't have to make a big deal out of it. It's, just, it's not rocket science. Whatever you use in a certain amount of time, multiply it by how much you want to uh, have on hand. Give yourself a little leeway, a little extra there. It's not that hard. It's not that difficult. Just make sure the big thing is stock stuff that you're actually going to eat. You, you don't go get stuff that you don't want to eat or don't normally eat now because you don't know if you're going to want to eat it then. So, yeah, if you don't eat beans, don't buy 450 pounds of beans. Yeah. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, Skip, don't buy spam if you don't eat spam. Hey, man. <laughs> So, okay, well, we'll segue into clothing. Uh, now, I am not, if anybody's ever seen me in person, I, I am not a clothing person. I pretty much, if you see a picture of me from 1985, I'm pretty much wearing the same stuff I wore in 1985, including stuff, outerwear, like jackets. I wear shorts in the summer and long wind pants in the, win in the winter, occasionally jeans, and you know what I'm doing. I want to have pockets, uh, especially a back pocket for my wallet. And I wear jeans. As far as clothing for survival or if shit hit the fan or whatever, I'd, having some good outdoor clothing like uh, Carhartt or uh, Dickies or some uh, brand like that, some good quality stuff so that you, to be outside in the cold is uh, pretty much you need to have that. If you good pair of boots, now you don't have to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on a pair of boots. Go spend, you know, whatever, and try them out. And you like them. If you've worn the same, the guys have worn the same boots since they were teenagers, right, Skip? Yes, sir. One thing I would <laughs> say about boots, though, is just make sure they're comfortable before you leave the store, because oh yeah, boots yeah. can tear your feet up if you've got the wrong cut on. Yeah, put them on and walk around the store, run around the store, uh, do some sprints. 
whatever. If you're gonna spend a hundred bucks on a, or hundred and fifty bucks on a pair of boots, don't just slip them on your feet. Make sure they fit and walk out the store. You, you wanna, you know, don't make it look like you're stealing them, but you wanna you wanna put some a little bit of mileage on them in the store. Make sure you wear the socks that you're gonna wear with them. If you're gonna wear long wool socks, bring long wool socks with you or wear them in the store with you. Make sure they fit you correctly, and then go from there. If they don't work out for you, return them and get something else. Well, this but is going to sound a good clothing What's snobby. That? I say this is going to sound clothing snobby, but one thing I'll say about boots for sure is you kind of get what you pay for. If you're going to Walmart and buying a $20 pair of boots, you're getting a $20 pair of boots. So yeah, be very careful and mindful of what you buy. Yeah. Yeah. And that, don't just buy boots to have boots. Make sure they are what you're going to need them for. Uh, if you're going to spend a lot of time in the water or if you're going to be – you know, buy the right kind of boot for what you need. I wear tennis shoes all the time. I'm not a sandal guy. I'm not a flip-flop guy. I wear tennis shoes. I don't know how many miles I've got on my shoes right now. They're probably five years old. I have a newer pair that I don't like. <laughs> so I wear the, I slip these things on. I, I snow blow in them. I go out and shovel in them uh, without socks on. My feet don't get wet. My feet don't get cold. They're a wonderful pair of shoes. Unfortunately, they are starting to fray a little bit, and the, so, the inside is totally shot. So, but wear what you like is, is a big thing. That that's I'm I'm big on that with everything. Uh, bags, uh, obviously, food. We just got done talking about that. Firearms. Firearms. Yeah, knives. Whatever. Don't you don't necessarily have to care what the guy next door has. Find out what you like. Everybody's like, gotta have wool socks. You gotta have blah 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 blah. I have, yeah, of course I have some wool socks, but I'm gonna wear cotton socks in my tennis shoes because I know what I can do in my tennis shoes and my cotton socks. I mean, it's not like I I I wear boots. I've worn boots. I worked construction. I worked lots of other stuff, unloading trucks and whatnot, and dropping boxes on my feet. Uh, I got steel toe boots. I got regular work boots. I got hiking boots. I've you know I've gone through all that stuff. I come back to my tennis shoes. I don't. I I can't tell you the last time I wore a pair of boots. It's been a couple of years. So wear what you like. Don't buy something because everybody tells you you need something when you're never going to use it. Yeah, and then don't. Uh, what am I trying to say here? Don't worry about what they think. They're not walking in. You. They're not doing. They're not you. You're not them. You shouldn't worry what they have, and they shouldn't worry what you have. Uh, if if yeah, if you're in the group and you can't. Let's say if shit hits the fan, okay, and you're in a group and you're going someplace on foot for some whatever reason, and people can't keep up because of their footwear, then then maybe that's an issue. But then that's a decision what you make at the time. It might be little kids in their tennis shoes, you know, but for everyday possibility of emergencies, that kind of stuff, wear what you want to wear. Uh, buy what you want to wear uh, or that you can afford, obviously, that. That's another big thing. Don't go spend. I don't even know what high end boots cost because I don't look at high end boots. What four hundred bucks maybe? Five hundred bucks? Two fifty. Boots that yeah. that expensive? Two fifty for a good pair of Red Wings or something like that. Docs. If you can't afford them, don't you know not pay the electric bill so you can buy some really expensive boots unless you absolutely need them. Then maybe yeah you work out a plan to get them. Uh, don't bankrupt yourself for a nice pair of boots that for a situation that may never happen, like we discussed before. Common sense kind of falls into play here. Get what you can afford, get what you like, and go from there. That goes for everything. Outerwear, clothing, uh, long underwear, if you're do thermal, if you do 100 bucks for a, or 90, 80 bucks for long underwear from Under Armour, I know I'd, I'd buy the $25 stuff at Walmart. <laughs> I'll buy three pairs and have three pairs of long underwear from Walmart for the one pair. I mean, because it's long underwear. It's not like it's... Well, I can't speak to Under Armour, but I know I have a lot of Carhartt gear, and I can tell you some of it's got some age on it, and still mm-hmm. it's held up like nothing that I've ever owned. Uh, I've had the generics, like, uh, for a while, Cabela's was selling their own knockoff Carhartt jackets. I think it lasted six months, where I have a Carhartt jacket now that's probably five years old. 
and it looks it. I mean, don't get me wrong, but it's not falling mm-hmm. apart. The zippers work. So sometimes you do get what you pay for with the higher end clothing. Oh yeah, yeah. For for stuff like that, yeah. But when I'm I'm thinking underwear because you change it every day. It's not being exposed to the you know the elements unless you're running around in your long underwear. <laughs> but and then you have three pairs. So if of the cheaper stuff, it's not like I'm buying like some stuff out of some guy's trunk. Uh, you know. I don't know where to go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know what I'm saying. Spend your money wisely, and you know where you need to. Like it, we're getting away from clothing here, but a knife. You you get what you pay for. So maybe a knife you want to spend a little bit more money on than, let's say, a cup, <laughs> a camp cup. There's camp cups out there that are forty bucks. Yes. Or there's camp cups out there that are five ninety nine. Well, maybe find something that's maybe twelve. You know where I'm going with that? It's kind yeah. of... Well, I, you talk about knives. I, I'm sure I'll make some people cringe, but I've carried the same buck knife for 25 years. So, and it's a buck. It's a real buck knife, and everybody's... Oh, yeah. yeah. I I have one that's I carried through high school, uh, and then it got retired to uh, my tackle box. It was old when I got it. Right. So, it was probably... I got it from a neighbor. Uh, his father gave it to me. So, I think... I don't, who knows how old it is? It might be, might be as old as I am. I would guess because if I had it in high school, so quality comes across. But yeah, you use you know, what, like you said, use what is good for you and what's comfortable yeah. and works for you, not what the coolest yeah. fad is in the prepping world of the day. Yeah, because it, it all boils down to: uh, Are you comfortable in it? Back to: Can you afford it? Will you use it? Will it last once you start using it? It's all that stuff comes down to how you perceive everything that you want to get. Everything from clothing to bags to regular equipment to whatever, you know. So I am not one for to spend a lot of money on clothes. And I don't shop for clothes. I figure out what I need and I go in and I get it and then go back out. <laughs> no. If I'm in an electronic store, come back in three or four hours. And yeah, right. Out, but You've memorized every uh, every uh, end cap and <laughs> <laughs> ooh clearance section. What's in here? Oh my! <laughs> to a lot of people, it's a really big deal, but it is and it isn't because you can take care of yourself no matter what with whatever you have. So I mean, do whatever fits you best. How much you spend on it, and what you use it for, whatever it's it's it comes down to like we've been keep saying whatever you whatever you like and whatever you can afford and use so i think we'll wrap that up and Sounds good. Uh, wrap up the evening so uh, make sure you check us out on facebook at 21st century prepper and on the net at uh, 21stcenturyprepper.net thank you very much <laughs>